Thank you, Bella. She's amazing. Man, it's so good to see all of you. Thank you for being here today. And for those of you who have joined us uh, on live, li online and through the live stream, uh, thanks uh, for joining us. Um, we're just really excited, excited for a new semester, right? And uh, I know it's um, a little bit different, uh, you know, than we'd like it to be, but at least we're back. At least we're together, uh, and uh, it's really fun to see uh, uh, familiar faces, and, and at least seeing people back in this chapel is really, really fun for me, for sure. Uh, let's be honest, right? It, this, whole, this whole experience, uh, it stinks. I'll be the first to say it. I am not happy about it at all. But it is what it is, and um, I'm really grateful that people are cooperating. I see masks across your faces if you're in the room. Thanks for doing that. And uh, people that are out and about uh, around campus and, uh, you know, masking up and staying distanced. And, you know, those are the things that are actually going to really allow us to, to keep functioning through the semester and stay safe. And uh, so I just, I just want to say uh, thank you so much. If I haven't met you, my name is Phil. And um, uh, if you're brand new this semester, I want to give you a huge welcome. Thanks for being here. I look forward to, to meeting you and having a conversation with you. And, and uh, if you have questions, I'm happy to answer those uh, for you as well. Or, or I look forward to a conversation or prayer time we can have together in some way, shape, or form. We're going we're gonna to give you a, um, a bit of information today. It, it may feel like a lot. Um, but it, it is kind of, uh, I think, foundational for kind of where we are and what we're trying to do and accomplish at Northwest University, um, especially in the area of spiritual formation and discipleship. Um, it is the thing that makes Northwest unique, let's be honest. I mean, this is a Christian uh, faith-based institution, and um, we, are, uh, we are fully dedicated to that. Uh, if we didn't have that element, uh, we would look very much like any other institution, the truth is uh, Jesus is at the center of, of this institution and everything that we do and say um, kind of starts there, right? It comes out of there foundationally. So we're going to talk a little bit about spiritual formation uh, and um, kind of the program a little bit about how chapel works here and, and um, uh, some information that might helpful, be helpful to you. So at, at, at Northwest, uh, spiritual formation is built on a foundation with four pillars. Uh, I refer to them oftentimes as four pillars, but sometimes they're more referred to or more likely referred to as steps because I actually do believe that they build on one another, steps that build on one another as we grow and mature as followers of Christ. Those four steps or four pillars are personal, relational, congregational, and missional. And we'll dive into those just a little bit further uh, in a few minutes. But it's within that framework um, that people are formed into followers of Christ. That's our goal. We make followers of Christ. We want to become followers of Christ. So what does a follower of Christ or a follower of Jesus look like? So where you are shapes who you are. Where you are shapes who you are. That's why we create this environment at Northwest, because we want you to become a true disciple or follower of Jesus. Right now, in this moment, the environment that you are in is having an effect on you. You may not realize it. You may not see it. You may not even want it. But you are being shaped. You are becoming where you are. And that is why at Northwest, we are all about being a spiritually vibrant community that helps people become better followers of Jesus. So at Northwest, we envision and work towards a community of spiritual vitality that fosters spiritual formation of every person, every member. And we invite you to organize your life around three main themes, and that is to love Jesus to trust Jesus, and to follow Jesus. Love, trust, follow. I believe in it so much, I've got the shirt. i got the t-shirt, right? So love, trust, follow. It's, it's an important part of who we want to become as a community together. So the whole life for a Jesus follower may be summed up in loving Jesus. Love God, love people. Love God, love people. Our goal, or 
or maybe even better said, our, our command, the great command, is to continually desire and pursue, pursue deeper intimacy with Jesus, abiding in his presence, hearing his voice, and deepening our relationship with him. Our, our love for Jesus does not start with us. Rather, we love him because he first loved us. Jesus is the initiator. To love Jesus also means to love what he loves, and that's people. He came for people. He initiated love. When I was young, uh, I realized that God loved me no matter what. came to that realization. I was seven years old. Um, and in my perfection, my imperfection, in my imperfection, God gave his son Jesus to bring me into a perfect relationship with God. To make me right, righteous. Can't do it without Jesus. And it's because he loved me. I came to this realization that I am imperfect. The Bible calls it sin. I like the word imperfect. And I'm still imperfect. I'm a, I'm a work in progress. Let's be honest. We probably all are. I'm a work in progress. But I'm getting better every day. But it's through that relationship with Jesus that that imperfection becomes right. And I have this relationship now with God. And this, this verse, as a young person, became very real to me. You probably all know it. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Almost had to, almost lost it there for a moment. An important verse. And it actually demonstrates the, 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 the love that God has for the world. That he would give so much his son. What a gift. What a gift. And I realized that. But as, I, as a young person, but as I became older, I realized what Jesus did was an example. It was an example of what he intends for us to do for other people. We make the sacrifice of love for others to bring them into right relationship with Jesus. We make a sacrifice. God made a sacrifice. We made us make a sacrifice. We make a sacrifice. We love people in order that they will also have a right relationship with God. And that takes work. It takes effort. There's people that make it difficult to love. Would you say amen to that? It's true for me. Man, I have to work at that. But this verse, 1 John chapter 4, verse 9, I think really says it well. This is how God showed his love to us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. We have to work at it. But it's the example that we, that we have in Jesus to help us make the most of that. The first and most important part of spiritual formation is accepting love and giving love the way it was demonstrated and given to us. I, uh, I read a story not long ago, a true story, and it sort of captured this whole thought for me in a very real way. Powerful story. A mom by the name of Mary Young son, she had one son. At 20 years old, he went to a, a party. Um, and at the party, a young man who had been drinking by the name of O'Shea Israel confronted Mary's only son. 20 years old, O'Shea was 16. O'Shea had been drinking. There was a confrontation, some words exchanged. And out of his drunken state, O'Shea pulled out a gun and shot Mary's son and killed him. O'Shea went to prison. He was, uh, uh, went to prison for second degree murder, of which Mary was actually not happy. She became full of bitterness, anger. She felt like he needed a, a stronger sentence for killing her son. Matter of fact, her anger and bitterness 
really almost destroyed her for more than 10 years. She hardly left her home. She wouldn't even look at her son's picture because of the memories, the difficult challenges. She was very, very, very angry. After a period of about 10 years went by, something just really changed in her heart. And uh, she thought, you know, I, I, need to, I, need to, I need to reach out to O'Shea. He was in a state penitentiary at that point. And so she did. She reached out. She asked if she could visit him, of which he denied the request. He himself was full of shame. She asked again. He said no. She asked again many times, and he rejected. Finally, one day, he uh, relented and said, uh, I'll accept a visit. Mary went and visited him. And when they first saw each other after ten, more than 10 years at this time, um, she fell into O'Shea's arms, begging him to forgive her for the bitterness, resentment, unforgiveness. He was holding her up, literally, as she was collapsing on the floor. As she released all of this bitterness and anger that she had towards this young boy who had killed her son. O'Shea forgave her, and they forgave each other, and developed a relationship so much so that when O'Shea was out on parole and looking for a place to live, Mary rented the home right next door to hers, was available, asked O'Shea to move in next door to Mary. O'Shea became the son that Mary lost. True story, today they travel together and they actually help victims of violent crime work through challenging situations. An incredible story of love, but an incredible story of an example of what it is to love people the way that God loves us. Love. Our hope and prayer is that you understand and become an individual that not only embraces the love of God, but leans into it. Become a loving individual, a person that really knows how to love people, even when it's difficult. Love. What does it mean to trust? Well, I want to share with you a little bit about what I think it means to trust Jesus. And um, as I was thinking about this, I was thinking about what invites me to trust anything. And the way that I know if I can trust anyone or anything is if they are faithful. If they are a faithful person. I think about... If I were to ask um, any of us to raise our hands if we've experienced betrayal in our lives in some way, shape, or form, um, I think we could all raise our hands. I don't think that all of us might use the word betrayal, but I think a smaller version of betrayal is disappointment. I think all of us have experienced some form of disappointment in our lives. I think about the fact that there have been um, promises made to me by people, by friends, by family members, by companies or leaders or products that just haven't come through. They just haven't done what they said they were going to do. Um, I just watched a commercial the other day that promised if I got these certain shoe inserts, I would literally live a joyful life. It was promising me so much more than that product could promise me, and I know it wouldn't come through, right? It would not fulfill its promise. So how do we know we can trust God? How do we know that he is faithful? Well, we look at what he has done for us. If you look at the arc of scripture, you can see that starting in Genesis 3, right at the very beginning, when he, out of love, created us, he, uh, he saw us fall. He saw us choose to go our own way. And right away, he offered us a solution. He told us that he was going to save us. He offered um, a savior, promised a savior in Genesis 3. And as you look throughout scripture and history, you see that God has orchestrated all of the things that have happened throughout history to bring about that salvation up until the point of Jesus Christ and until his return. And um, the coolest part to me in seeing his faithfulness in that is that he didn't just send the solution from afar. He was the solution. He came himself to fulfill his promise. And um, in 2 Corinthians 1.20, um, Paul says this. He says that... Um, all of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding yes. So we see that God is faithful completely. And in that process of trusting him, we find out that we can not only trust him to fulfill his promises of salvation, but that the way of life he shows us through Jesus is trustworthy. 
and that that way of life is offered to us as the best way to live, and we can choose it, and we should choose it. And it's going to be the way that we are going to be known. It's the way that we are going to know God. It's the way that we're going to know how to interact with the world. It's the way that we're going to know how to make decisions um, is to look at the way of Jesus and to trust him. Um, and so in, that, uh, jour- in our journey here at Northwest, what we want to invite you into is a journey of trust and to deepening that trust. I think about this hymn. Uh, if you've heard this hymn before, it actually comes from the 1880s. It's called, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. Um, it says this. It says, Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know, thus saith the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him or and or. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. So it's our prayer that we would have the grace to trust him more at Northwest and that we would prove him or and or through our acts of faith and trust and that we would be able to say when we're 30, 40, 50 years down the line out of this place that we have proved him even more and that he has shown himself to be even more trustworthy. Yeah. Micah wants to share with us about following Jesus. Awesome. Thanks, Megan. Uh, On our third word, you guys have heard us say love, trust, follow a lot. Uh, The third word is follow. And what I like about follow is uh, kind of going off what they just said. First, love. God loved us first. And that is his initiation. And we respond with loving him and other people back. God was faithful, like Megan was just saying. And that's him initiating that. And we desire to be faithful back towards God and towards each other. And follow, like God's not following us. Uh, follow is a, a unique one. It's, it's our response to this. It's our response to the goodness of God, to the faithfulness of God, to the love of God. We say, God, okay, I'm going to respond and I'm going to follow you. I'm going to put my faith in, like Phil was saying with John 3, 16, I'm going to put my trust and my hope in you and the eternal salvation that comes through Jesus and I'm going to follow you. And we really hope that in your time here at Northwest, you will grow in all three of these things and you will grow as a follower of Jesus. And um, one of the big things about following that really stands out to me is the idea of surrender. And the idea of when you follow God, you're saying, God, no longer are my ways the best ways. No longer are my thoughts and the things that I desire or the things that the world desires and the culture desires going to be the thing that I put the most in. Following Jesus says, God, I put you first. God, I put you at the center, like we sang earlier. God, you are the guiding principle, the word of God, the Bible. That is what I stand on. That's what I live by. That's what I walk by. And I'm going to follow you and I'm going to trust those words. I'm going to love and respond that way. And so much about following Jesus is, is surrendering, God, not my will, but your will be done. Not my will. Like Jesus was our example in the Garden of Gethsemane. He said, he said Father, I made this cup pass for me, but not my will, your will be done. And that is our prayer every single day as followers of Jesus. And so much of the, the way that happens is we become like Jesus. And a lot of our programming and our desire is that you will look more and more like Jesus. I hope that, you know, when we run into each other in 10 years, we can look at each other and say, man, we both look more and more like Jesus. If we run into each other in 40 years from now, we can look at each other and be like, wow, we both look more and more like Jesus. And that is our prayer and that is our heart. That's why, that's why we do what we do. That's why we desire. That's why Christian education is, is so different and it's so important. Is because this is a space we desire you to look more and more like Jesus. And that practically looks and comes about by following him. By living the life that Jesus did. That picking up the way that Jesus did. The spiritual disciplines. The, having your life be oriented around the way of Jesus. And uh, we, we read in Matthew 4, chapter, uh, ver, chapter 4, verse 18 and 20. Uh, This is Jesus um, calling his first disciples, and it says, As he was walking along the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Follow me, he told them, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately, they left their nets and followed him. And that same invitation is for you and for me and for Phil and for Megan and for anyone Watching, like that's our invitation to follow Jesus and to say yes to him. And that's a continual thing, not just when we accept Jesus and we follow him the first time we believe. And at the end of Matthew 28, 18 through 20, it says this. Jesus came near to them. All, Jesus came near and said to them, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations 
baptizing them in the name of the Father and in the Son and in the, uh, the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Part of our call as followers of Jesus is that missional aspect of preaching and proclaiming the gospel. And that's not just for pastors and people on a stage. Our life preaches the gospel. You are going to interact with people that we could never interact with. You are going to have coffee with people that I will never have coffee with. And um, your, your family is not my family. And those are people that God has put in your life. I don't know who comes to your mind right now. Those are people that God has put in your life to preach and proclaim the gospel to. And that is part of our call and action as followers of Jesus. And uh, to tie back to what Phil was saying, a lot of the programming we do is based on that, those four pillars and that four steps, personal, relational, congregational, and missional. And we intentionally desire for you at your time at Northwest uh, and for us in our own lives to grow in all four of these ways. So Phil, jump in and I know you have some more you want to talk about. Yeah, so, so within this framework uh, where we, we love, trust, follow Jesus, um, that, f- that flows into a, a framework, um, uh, a foundation, if you will, pillars, as I mentioned before, steps, as I like to call them, steps because it's a process of growth. Uh, Mike was just saying it, personal relational, congregational, and missional. And these are really important. As I've, and I've, and as I've worked with uh, the whole idea of spiritual formation for a number of years now, this really came um, as a, uh, a thought to me of how we've got to grow. Uh, more and more uh, times I would have conversations with people and they would start to ask the question, you know, why do I go to church? And even a lot of times um, I'd have this conversation with people um, become really disenfranchised with the church in general because they just didn't see the benefit. Or chapel services, for example. You know, well, that would what be what we call congregational. That's, that's the third step, right? And if you think of it in terms of how you go up steps as you walk upstairs, sure, you can, you can jump to the third step, right? If you're, you know, if you're really an active person and in good shape, you can jump all the way to the third step. You might even jump all the way to the fourth step, missional. You could do that if you want to. But isn't it easier to walk up the steps in sequence to get where you're going? Isn't it a little bit easier? It makes a little bit more sense. And so when people uh, struggle with, why do we have chapel? You know, uh, it doesn't really do anything for me. Well, I have to ask the question, um, well, how are you doing with the first two steps? Because the first two steps help make the third step makes sense. When you have developed a personal relationship with God that is growing and vibrant, when you are interacting with people, as the Bible says, iron sharpening iron, and you're, and you're engaging in prayer together, and you're hearing people struggle through their issues, and you're working through them together with prayer and really giving them to God, personal relationship, now you come to a worship setting, and it's like, Oh, this, I'm coming, I'm coming to worship God, to give something, not just to get. This is coming out of the love I have for God. I go on a mission trip. Well, sure, you could go by yourself. You could skip the personal side or relational side, but you're so much more effective when you go together. You know, so these are steps. And uh, this morning, you know, as, I, as I've grown just in my own relationship with Jesus, it, it was, you know, I started out, it was a struggle. Some of you probably feel that way. My Bible reading, I'd have a little chart, you know, when I was young. I'd check the boxes. Sometimes I'd miss them. I'd feel really guilty about that. I had to get over that and just pick up and keep going. But those check boxes really helped me develop a habit of personal growth, personal. The personal step is so important. It really is. Even this morning, I was uh, on the treadmill. I, I, I pray and exercise. That's kind of what I do. This morning, I was in Isaiah 41.10, just a powerful scripture, God's uh, overcoming fear and God's faithfulness to us. Had Spotify on, worship music. I started singing, How Great Is Our God. I'm on the treadmill. I'm just a basket case, tears rolling down my eyes. I'm having my, I could actually start crying right now. I'm having my own real moment with Jesus because he's become so real to me. Where it used to be a task early in life, and that's okay. You start there. But now I can't wait to get up in the morning. I can't wait to have can't wait to have that moment. I look forward to it. The Holy Spirit speaks to my heart. We want you to grow personally. 
And so as part of the program, part of the process, we offer credit. We're going to talk a little bit about that, but personal. So we've got credit where we're, we're actually offering credit for a Bible reading process for you. On January 20th, we're starting uh, Luke and Acts. We're going to read through Luke and Acts this semester together. You can go to the app. Uh, if you'd like to, or northwestudevo.com. If you'd like to go there, uh, you'll see the Bible reading plan. We're going to go through it together. Luke Acts, that actually ties into what's happening on Mondays in chapel where we have students actually teaching through the book of Luke and Acts on Mondays, and then we're going to be reading it together as well on your personal development time. And then we also offer five books. You can see those on the app as well, five different books. I just finishing, uh, finished reading the book, Be, uh, Be the Bridge, um, uh, just a couple of weeks ago. It's a great book, but five books um, that uh, we offer to you for credit. Two of those will be credit. If you, uh, if you read the book, write a little report, um, and uh, we give you credit, spiritual life credit for those. That's personal, relational. Yeah, relational. Um, and on that real quick note for the Bible reading plan, I meant to say this in the first service. We created, uh, it's through Version. That's what the app, our Northwest Udiva app will take you to Version, And we created a Northwest Campus Ministries account and we can friend request you. I, I, don't know if you, I didn't know if you knew you could do that on the Uversion Bible app. You can like friend request people and follow along. So we're going to be going through that starting on the 20th. And if you want to like feel some sense of accountability or just enjoy doing it with other people, it doesn't have to be us, but you can just do it with friends. But that's totally an option. Uh, you can search and you can add friend requests on the Uversion Bible app. And if you don't have that app, super great one. You should totally download it. Um, for the relational spiritual formation, this looks like doing life together, kind of like Phil was just saying. And the best way that we like to do that is through crews. And we jump in and we do life together with each other. And I can't overstate how important it is for us, especially in this season um, with COVID regulations and distancing and masks. And we're not used to how life should be in the relational aspect that we're getting. Like it's even more important to lean into those resources. So maybe it's your roommate in your apartment. Maybe it's your family group, or maybe it is, you know, the people that you live with kind of on your hall. It's three to five people of the same gender meeting together every week um, to just dive in and follow Jesus together, process life together. Um, walk, talk about what you're going through, encourage one another, come to chapel together, all that kind of stuff. So we encourage you, jump into a crew. You can either lead one or you can, um, you can just be a part of one. And then also with that, we're going to be doing the four-week focus. We do this every year, and it's just intentional group curriculum or material uh, that you can find on the app, and it's going to connect with our prayer series. And we just want to be diving in as followers of Jesus of spending time with the Lord, praying, and then talking about that together. Talking about, hey, how's, how's your prayer life? How's my prayer life? I want to encourage you in that. Uh, I want to just speak life into you. And, hey, I, today was hard. Can you speak life into me? And all that kind of stuff. So dive into the four-week focus. We're really excited about that. And then uh, lastly with well, relational, we're doing Chick Chat and Fellowship, which we're really, really excited about. Um, we didn't get to do them last semester with COVID, so we're going to be doing one Chick Chat right now and one fellowship in the month of February. And Brenda, Phil's wife, is, if you didn't know that, is very, very excited. She loves putting on Chick Chat, and uh, me and the team love putting on Fellowship. And we're really excited. Put that on your calendar. Uh, it's going to be in uh, February. And so we're, we're super pumped. We'd love for you guys to be there. Um, it's going to be, you know, safe and distance and masks and all that kind of stuff. But we'd love for you guys to be there with us for those. So Megan's going to jump into congregational. Yeah, so congregational may make the most sense to you in terms of what we do. It has to do with our chapel gatherings. Um, I want to tell you how we're doing them this semester. We have Monday, Wednesday, Friday chapels. All of them are live streamed. So you can watch them anytime, 10 a.m. or 11, 20 a.m. on the live stream. On Monday and Wednesday, you can also join us here in the chapel. We have 54 seats per chapel, and we'd love to have you here. Um, we also have a really cool event coming up in March called Revive. We didn't get to do a Revive last semester, but they're just awesome worship nights with a really inspirational message. And this uh, year, we're going to be hearing from Pastor Alex Seely. She's the pastor of The Belonging Co., and um, that's in Nashville. She and her husband lead the church, and she has a message just for us here at Northwest um, to encourage us and grow us in our faith. So mark your calendars for March 29th. Um, I want to tell you real quick what we're going to be talking about in chapel. Uh, so we already mentioned that we're doing Luke and Acts on Mondays with, uh, not senior speakers, with student speakers. 
Um, so um, that's going to be really cool to hear from your peers. Uh, on Wednesdays, though, before spring break, we're going to talk about prayer. Uh, we really want to all grow in the discipline of prayer. So come and hear those. On Fridays uh, before spring break, we'll be doing a series called Emotionally Healthy Spirituality. It's all about the fact that we can't be spiritually healthy until we're emotionally healthy. So we'll be going through some great topics there. And then Wednesdays after spring break, we'll be talking about how to steward our missional lives. We'll even learn our spiritual gifts and how to put those into practice. And on Fridays after spring break, we'll do a series called Stories from the Bible. And we'll be hearing about the different characters that we get to know in Genesis and what they can teach us about ourselves. Um, so tune in for all of those. And we'd love to have you learn along with us in all of those areas. And then to wrap that up, missionally, uh, we have some mission trips going out this summer. We're really excited. They're going to Los Angeles and the Mississippi Delta. And I would just encourage you, be praying. There's probably about 10 to 15 students right now kind of going on those. And with COVID, obviously, that makes that hard in you know regular year. Next year, you can look forward to somewhere between five to seven mission trips that go around the world. Please be praying for your sisters and your brothers that are going on those trips. And then we have local missions, and we would love for you to be a part of that. We have two awesome, awesome um, groups that are called Embargo and Lighthouse that go out and they serve in our local community. And so if you have a passion for that, we would love for you. There's an email that you can connect with one of us uh, to be a part of that because we really do care about not just you know, the global community. We care about this community, Kirkland, Seattle. We want to be engaging with the people in the area, bringing the hope of the gospel. And so if any of this interests you, Megan's going to jump in and tell us how to get connected. All this information we've said might be overwhelming, so I want you to pull your phones out, open up the camera. If you don't already have the Northwest UDevo app, zoom in on this QR code, or if you're online, go to northwestudevo.com and then click on the app tab and download the app. The app is great to have, not just for all this information, but also because this is where you can watch the live stream and where you can enter your spiritual life credit. So we, uh, we really encourage you to have it. So go ahead and take a second and get that Northwest U Devo app downloaded if you don't already have it. I'm giving you a second to do that. And then I have another thing that I want you guys to do that I want to invite you into. And that is this next uh, screen has a QR code for join the team. Campus Ministries has 10 student leaders that serve with us, and they do all kinds of things just to make spiritual formation happen on campus, and you can join in with us. We want you to find a place to belong here. Um, some of the areas we really need volunteers right now are with photography and hospitality, which has to do with welcoming people to the chapel. Um, and really, there's so much more. You can help us with gatherings. You can help us with missions. You can grow in your worship skills. You can become somebody who helps teams go to churches and serve in churches. There's all kinds of things that you can serve with us to do and become um, stronger in your spiritual gifts and join into the community at NU. So we encourage you to join the team. That QR code will take you to a page on Northwest U Devo with all the options for getting involved. And we'd love to hear from you. We'll get in touch with you if you fill that out. Lastly, spiritual life credit. We've mentioned it a couple times. Um, spiritual life credit is a core part of Northwest. Uh, Northwest is affiliated with the uh, Alliance for Assemblies of God Higher Education. As a result of our affiliation with them, we are asked to have three chapel opportunities for our students per week. We're asked to have our students actually go to three chapel opportunities per week in order to keep our affiliation um, here at Northwest, we've decided we feel like there's lots of ways to grow spiritually, and we want to give you all those options, and that's why we talked about all those options today. So rather than requiring three chapels a week, we're asking you to get 25 spiritual life credits this semester. It's usually 35. We're dropping it down to 25 during this time of COVID. So if you have 12-plus credits here on campus, you'll need to get 25 spiritual life credits this semester. If you have any questions anytime about spiritual life, email slattendance at northwestu.edu and we'll help you out. And um, 
The last thing I'll say is there is a fee attached to um, not attaining those 25 credits. And um, that's mostly for the sake of accountability, um, for the sake of just fairness. Um, but I want to let you know that even though there is a fee attached to that, none of that goes um, back into campus ministries. It's actually a really cool um, use that it has when it happens. And that is that any uh, spiritual life credit fee that um, appears on your account actually goes straight into the benevolence fund. So the benevolence fund is a fund that serves our students and staff and faculty when they have a one-time kind of emergency need, like a car bill or a health bill they weren't expecting. And so um, that, is, that is where that goes. But last thing I'll say, 25 spiritual life credits required this semester. We have over triple the number of opportunities that you need to get those credits. We have like 75 options through crews and life groups and through chapel and all the other options. And so if you need help making a plan, email spiritual life attendants, but we want to help you get those 25 and we know that you can. So that's the, that's what we want to say about spiritual life attendants. I'll turn it over to Phil. Thank you, Megan. I think, I think you said this, but I want to think, I want to make sure uh, Friday is live stream only, right? Did you Friday say that? Friday is live stream only. Live stream only. So as far as being in chapel, that's on Monday and Wednesday, uh, Friday is live stream only, and Monday night when we start Pursuit, that will be live stream only as well. Um, so just to keep that into, into perspective. Um, we love to connect, and I would love to meet with many of you. Uh, uh, all of us are available um, if you'd like to uh, connect with us. Matter of fact, this afternoon, even for me personally, I, I do Wednesdays and Fridays. I try to uh, connect with as many people as I possibly can, and what I've been doing um, last semester uh, was hanging out in the Bacota Lounge and having some great conversations and prayer times with people. Um, I'm, I'm under a bit of an interesting situation right now. I've got a, a, a medical warning uh, that I've been given, uh, and that is because I have a pretty severe cancer patient living in my home. My uh, son-in-law uh, is, in, is walking through a, a real tough time. I won't go into detail, details on that, but his immune system is at zero. <laughs> I mean, it is wiped out. Uh, so I've been told uh, to stay away, keep my distance, and be very, very careful because it would not be good for him. But so as a result of that, um, even today, I'm, I'm going to send out a, a Zoom link uh, to an email you'll get. And if, and if you'd like to connect with me, um, just click. Uh, there might be already people on the, on the call, um, but if I can talk, pray, connect... Um, I'll just be hanging out until you, until you jump on the call at any time for about two hours, hour and a half, I think, is what I have scheduled for today. And then Friday is the same thing. So when you see that email, just feel free to jump in if you'd like to. We'd love to connect with you. You know, some people have asked uh, this question um, last semester. Many of you remember uh, Pastor Christian Dawson. Uh, Pastor Christian uh, resigned in September, as a matter of fact, for most, most of you know that already. He has served here he's at Northwest for uh, about 10 years total as a student and as a graduate uh, student, and then as a campus pastor was what uh, he served for a couple of years. And a uh, wonderful friend of mine, we still connect, he is now serving a church at down in Portland, Bridgetown Church, and just doing a fantastic job. I was just talking to him the other night uh, on the phone and just so proud of what he's doing. God called him there. We released him, and we blessed him to go. What I've discovered is that um, you can't replace a person like that. It's, it's hard to do, and I, I came to the conclusion you just, you just really can't. And um, so we've processed this whole uh, situation as far as campus pastor for the last four months, actually, and, uh, but we've come to this conclusion that we have people already on, in place, already working here, handling um, the, the duties of pastoral, uh, the pastoral duties uh, efficiently. And in, in light of Christian's department, we're really, uh, departure, uh, as much as we missed him, we, we didn't miss a beat <laughs> because of the individuals that really Christian raised up and people that are in place. And so what I have for you today is a really great announcement I'm excited about, uh, and that is the two individuals that are on this platform. Uh, you already know Megan. You've been here in her heart. Megan Netherton has been serving Northwest for more than five years as a ministry assistant, uh, working very closely with Christian, and she will now serve us as an associate pastor 
for care and coordination. And uh, she is very capable of doing that and excited about that role. Uh, she's taking steps already in terms of getting her credential, and that's uh, soon to be completed, uh, as well as other things that she'll be pursuing to um, qualify for that position. But we have already stepped into that for Megan, and uh, she's carrying that role already and doing an incredible job. And then Micah, you know Micah, who has been serving Northwest. He's been a student here, um, did his undergrad here. Uh, and now his graduate program, he's going to complete at the end of this uh, semester. He'll be done with that. But he's been serving us as a graduate assistant while he's been in his master's program. And uh, we are actually uh, promoting Christian, changing his title from graduate assistant to associate pastor for spiritual formation and discipleship, which is totally in his wheelhouse. He loves, as you can, you can tell just by hearing his heart today, he, uh, he loves uh, seeing people grow in their relationship with Christ and, and taking the process and developing the process and curriculum, etc., to make that happen. So I'm really excited about that announcement today that you should know. These are great people. Why don't you even now give them a hand and congratulate them? Would you do that? <laughs> Pretty excited. So... Thanks, you guys. And uh, so if you see them around campus or whatever, you'd like to connect with them, uh, please do so. That would be awesome, 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 awesome. Hey, thanks so much for being with us today. I want to just wrap us up in prayer. You can go to your app uh, now even and, and uh, get Spiritual Life credit. If, uh, if you just want to open that, uh, you'll see the link to get credit for the day. And then after I'm done praying, you're welcome to go out through both doors in the back that will be open for you. And uh, you can exit that way and, and uh, uh, stay, stay COVID safe. Thank you for doing that. Jesus, thanks so much for today. Thanks for a great semester. We just lean into it and excited about what you're going to do. I really do believe, Lord. I believe that in spite of the challenges that we face, uh, the circumstances that we don't like, you're going to do some great things. You really are. It's oftentimes in those overwhelming um, situations that oftentimes seem like uh, we don't know what's going on, that you show up the most and uh, do something extraordinary. And so I'm looking forward to that. God bless students today across this campus and everybody who is tuned in uh, through the live stream. Bless them. God, thanks for just a great community that we get to call home. And we just pray that you would give us a wonderful semester in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a great, great day.